Greetings, one and all. Welcome to a new potential series on this channel I like to call NHL Replayed. The series where we replay historical seasons from the NHL's 100 year existence to see if history will be repeated or rewritten. Now for this series we shall be using the newly released Franchise Hockey Manager 5, which is now available on Steam, and its historical season mode, which is complete with accurate rosters and statistics for each individual player and team for each of the NHL's first 100 seasons. For those of you who don't know, Franchise Hockey Manager 5, which was developed by Out of the Park Productions, is an in-depth hockey manager, similar in style and approach to that of the Football Manager series, Out of the Park Baseball, which they also developed, or East Side Hockey Manager. I have played several of the games in the Franchise Hockey Manager series, and the guys at OOTP were able to hook me up with a free code to this game, so I want to say a big thank you to them for the free game as a long-time fan of their series. I really love how much attention to detail and control that the Franchise Hockey Manager titles give you when you're running a hockey team, and I especially love the different leagues that are available in the game, such as the British Elite Ice Hockey League. So bonus points from me for adding the Elite League into this game. If you guys want me to do any videos in this game with the Elite League, do let me know in the comments down below. However, with a game like this, I feel like this series of games is one that could easily be forgotten by most hockey gamers that play NHL 19 on console, as Franchise Hockey Manager 5 is a PC-only game. So if you have Steam on your PC and you want an in-depth hockey management game, perhaps go and give Franchise Hockey Manager 5 a go. Also a big thank you once again to them for giving me the free code. But anyway, in this pilot episode, we are going right back to the beginning of the NHL's existence and replaying the league's inaugural 1917-18 season to see how this game simulation compares to what actually happened. To give you a bit of context as to what actually happened in the 1917-18 season, the regular season champions were the Montreal Canadiens. Yes, the first ever league champions, regular season champions, the Montreal Canadiens. They are the team that we are the GM in charge of. We've got our assistant coach doing most of the stuff. So we just had to pick a team to be in charge of. I figured we'd go for the regular season champs, the uh, Montreal Canadiens. As you can see, the four teams, only a four-team league in its first season, the Toronto Arenas, the Ottawa Senators, the Montreal Canadiens, and the Montreal Wanderers, who roughly halfway through the season folded, so it became a three-team league for the second half of the inaugural season. So the regular season champs were the Canadiens. The top scorer in the league was Montreal Canadiens forward Joe Malone, who scored 44 goals and 4 assists for 48 points in 20 games. Those are some pretty decent stats. I'm sure there are many NHL players nowadays that would like to have stats like that in a season. Also, the top goaltender for the regular season was Montreal Canadiens goaltender George Vesna. Yes, the man that the Vesna Trophy was named after managed to win the top goaltender award of the inaugural season with a 12-9 and record, one shutout, and a 3.93 goals against average. And looking at the list of the different goaltenders, 3.93 was an awesome goals against average for their first season. Just goes to show how much time has passed, hasn't it, ladies and gents? However, the Montreal Canadiens might have done very well in the regular season, but when it came to the Stanley Cup Championship, which saw the best team from the NHL play the best team from the uh, Western Canadian Hockey League, Toronto, the Toronto Arenas, were the team that won the first ever Stanley Cup in the NHL's existence. With Alf Skinner of the Toronto Arenas scoring 8 goals and 3 assists for 11 points in 7 games. So we're going to have to see through this simulation if any of that changes. I can very well imagine there might be some different stats going on here. We'll have to see. But one last thing before we begin, similarly to my franchise mode episodes on this channel, we shall be simulating through large parts of the season as well as simulating through the games that are played, which is possible if I show you in the manager options by activating commissioner mode, do not disturb mode, and making my assistant coach handle a lot of the team control and day-to-day -day stuff, such as scouting, setting lineups, roster moves, injuries player signings, everything like that. You can see that there's a lot that you can do in this game and a lot that you can make them do. Also, um, the exit autoplay, we're going to try and simulate through quite a few things. If a player is injured for at least a month of the season, we're going to stop the autoplay. And if we receive a personal message for GM Oddman Rush, we will stop the simulation there and see what's going on. So it's going to be very interesting. And also, I will make sure that at the end of the season, we will have a very big overview of everything that has happened 
in the season just to make sure that we don't forget anything. I will stop periodically during the season. Like, for example, if I click the play button here, we can go to the trade deadline, we can go to the playoffs, and we can check all the different stats from players, teams, and goaltenders. So I think, I think, that's, a, I think that's pretty good. So let's jump into this and see what happens, shall we, folks? So we've got a few news things before we start. Canadians in front office shakeup. Rush takes over as GM. For the Montreal Canadiens, it's time for a change. And that change came today when the team announced the odd man Rush has just inked a deal. Hey, my assistant's going to really be doing all the work, but thank you very much. Welcome to the Canadiens family. You have signed a two-year deal with a yearly salary of $2,000. It's just a different time, isn't it, ladies and gents? I'm earning $2,000 a season. The owner of the Canadians is Jordan Vallier. I'm not sure if that's historically accurate. And you've been given the following objective, a uh, playoff race. Your budget is $72,000 and your team's current payroll is $13,000. Like, healthy scratches in the NHL nowadays earn at least almost 10 times that money. That's ridiculous. It just goes to show you how, how far the NHL has come and how far the economy has come in order to have that much money. Here we go. So the 1917-18 preview. The National Hockey League has commenced operations. The Pacific Coast Hockey League enters its seventh season, having been founded in the 11-12 season. That's pretty cool. The champions of the two leagues will compete for the Stanley Cup. So team changes. The Montreal Canadiens, the Montreal Wanderers, the Ottawa Centres and the Toronto Arenas have all joined the NHL. There are our four teams. Then the Portland Rosebuds, the Seattle Metropolitans and the Vancouver Millionaires are playing in the Pacific Coast Hockey Association. Uh, draft changes. There's, there wasn't any draft before 1963, uh, but you can enable the draft. It will be used in these, so we don't need to worry about that. And uh, game rules. The Pacific Coast Hockey Association actually played seven-man hockey till 1923, but we don't need to worry about that. It's a six-man league that they're using in this game. And lineup and roster sizes in this era were much smaller than the game can currently handle at the moment, so they have to be comparable to the 1930s, apparently. So we might have a few things that we need to sort out there. I guess we'll figure it out. And a change to the rules... Um, have two teams play a two-game total goal series for the championship. Um, the NHL actually used a split-season format until 1922, and the finals could be skipped if a team won both halves. It's not possible to deactivate the playoffs in this way in this game, so the NHL instead plays a regular non-split season format. The Stanley Cup final is a best-of-five series. Okay, perfect. So let's get started, shall we? So we've got lots of pre-season games coming up. I think we should go to the, reg uh, the regular season beginnings and see what happens. So we have some unread messages here. Uh, training camp development, so some of our players are gaining some stats here. We'll take a look at our roster as we get to the start of the regular season. Eddie Carpenter has signed with the Montreal Canadiens. Welcome to the team. And goaltender Ivan Mitchell has joined. So let's keep going to the regular season. We've got a couple more days. Uh, we've signed Chuck Clark to the team. Vesna is injured day to day. Hopefully he'll be back for the start of the regular season because we're going to need him. Uh, Vesna ready for full contact? Well, I hope so. They're still going through preseason at the moment. I'm not really that interested in preseason at the moment. So every once in a while when we simulate, as you can probably have noticed, we will have unread messages. I might see if I can change this as the season goes along because there's quite a lot of messages here that I I'm not really that interested in looking at, to be honest. Unread messages. Uh, players need to clear waivers. That's not a problem. Vesna's almost 100%, so that's pretty good. But we're getting close to the start of the season. Vesna is back. We're going to need him. He is a stud. So let's do it. Here we go. 1917 NHL season preview. So we're at the start of the regular season. The inaugural NHL season. So with the National Hockey League season about to get underway, the early Stanley Cup favours... Oh, uh, early Stanley Cup favourites, I should say, appear to be Montreal. Hey! Led by centre Nuzi Lalonde. Hey, the captain of our team. 29 years old. Uh, General Manager Obman Rush woo, has built a squad that will be the team to beat this year, but they can expect challenges from Ryan Winnells, Toronto Arenas and Ottawa, featuring centre Frank Nyber. The scoring race will likely see Montreal's Nuzi Lalonde challenged by Joe Malone, who actually won it of course, and Ottawa's Frank Nyber. The top defenceman in the league is generally considered to be Toronto Arena's blue liner Harry Cameron, with Montreal's Bert Corbeau and Billy Cochu of Montreal also in the running. So we've got a good chance at this. Finally, among goaltenders, Montreal's George Vesna stands out as the league's best, while Toronto Arena's netminder Hap Holmes and Clint Benedict of Ottawa can also steal games for their team. Good to know. So let's take a look at our roster, shall we? Uh, roster, here we go. So we have C. Clark, Chuck Clark, who is... So as you can see over here, they have ability and potential stats. So where they're playing at the moment, where they could play if they keep playing up to a decent standard. And it's done by a star system. I think that's quite good. So Clark is a half a star goaltender. Mitchell is a one and a half star goaltender. Uh, Billy Kochu is a two and a half star defenseman. We then have uh, Laviolette, who is a one star defenseman. McNamara, who is a half star defenseman, but he's not uh, he's not icing by the looks of it. Uh, Carpenter, who is a two star player. 
Corbo, who is a three-star player. Hall, a one-and-a-half star. Amos Arba, which is a one-and-a-half star player. Uh, Louis Berlinquet, I believe that's how you say it, a two-star player. Then New Zealand on five stars. Oh, I'm going to expect a lot of good things from him. Joe Malone with four and a half stars, potential four and a half stars. Payer half a star. Uh, Joel Roshan at half a star. Ronan at a star. S Tommy Smith at a star. And Petra at a three and a half star. And uh, where's, uh, where's Vezina? Where did Vezina go? Has he come back? I hope he's back. Vezina is back. Uh, it may take him a game or two to get his fitness back. But he should be able to play the regular season now. Well, I bloody hope so. So I, I want Vesna in my lineup. So, okay, I think we're ready. Read all messages. Okay, play the game. So, here we go. Do we have Vesna in net? I don't see Vesna on this list of players, which doesn't make me seem very good. Goalie stats. Where is Vesna? Uh, okay. So, um, wait. Uh, can, we, can we go to all lines? Uh, change team. Montreal Canadiens. Oh, no, we want to go the Montreal Canadiens, definitely. So, Malone, Lalonde, and Petra are the top players for us. Not quite sure who is in goal for us. I guess we'll find out. So, uh, Ivan Mitchell. So, it's Ivan Mitchell playing in net for us this game. And Clint Benedict. So, unfortunately, Vesna got injured before the start of the season. Hopefully, he'll be back soon to help this team out. Uh, Montreal scratched. Okay, he's not actually part of the team, which is very interesting. I guess we'll have to figure out. So, as you can see, this is a very in-depth thing. There's a very... There's a lot of information on the screen at the moment, but we can simulate through the games. So our first game of the season against the Ottawa Senators. Simulate! And it is a 6-5 victory for the Montreal Canadiens over the Ottawa Senators. Five goals allowed for Mitchell. Six goals allowed for Clint Benedict. So Louis Berlinquet scored a hat-trick in the game. Then uh, uh, then C, Cy Denny for Ottawa scored a hat-trick. And Jack Laviolette had three assists in the game as well. Montreal ice time leader Eddie Carpenter with over half an hour. Wow. None of the Montreal players had a bad game. Joe Malone looked like he had a decent game as well. So that's pretty good. So here's the box score just in case you wanted to look at it. But there you go. So we are 1-0-0 zero, and zero to start the season as you can see up here. 1-0-0. Oh, oh, two points in the NHL. So uh, Cy Denny had a good game for them. Uh, do we have Thingy back now? I really want to double check to see if... Ve okay, Vesna is back. Okay, I want to dress Vesna. Yes, please. Uh, let's go to the uh, lines. And we'll just go uh, assistant create lines. Okay, so Vesna is back in net for us. So we had our backup in for game one. Just wanted to check that. Whew. Okay, so we've got another game coming up against the Montreal Wanderers. So I love the fact that they've got the vintage logo here. Of course, they don't have the uh, the vintage logo of the Montreal Wanderers. I guess that wasn't part of the um, the license because they have the license for NHL teams and Franchise Hockey Manager 5. I don't know if they if that's part of the license. I, I don't know. Clearly it's not because it's an NHL logo. So Vesna against Haig. The Montreal Canadiens and the Montreal Wanderers. A Montreal matchup here for game number two of the season. Simulate! And it is an 8 nothing victory for the Montreal Canadiens. Vesna's first game of the season stops all 26 shots. That's perfect. So Nuzi Lalonde with a hat-trick, Vesna with a shutout, and Didier Petra with one goal and three assists in the game. No Montreal players for us had bad games, which is pretty good. Uh, Vesna, Lalonde, Malone, Petra, Arbor, Corbo, and Berlinquet all had very good games for us. Thank you very much. So that's perfect. We're, we're off to a really good start here. So, big big game for Nuzi Lalonde. Yeah, he had four points in the game. So, he's looking like he could be a solid player for us. Uh, Jack Dara. Yep, Jack Dara's for Ottawa. They Okay, so the Ottawa Senators beat Toronto 8-6. So, we've played Ottawa. We've played the Wanderers. Now, it's up against the Toronto Arenas. Okay. So, we will have played all the teams in the NHL for the opening inaugural season early in this season. So, Hap Holmes. He's won both of his games. Vesna's won his and he's got a shutout. Shutout in his debut in the NHL as well. Let's see if we can do this, boys. Simulate! And it is a 6-5 win for the Toronto Arenas. So Vesna gives up six goals on 27 shots. Toronto, Hap Holmes gives up uh, five goals on 40 shots. Harry Meeking for Toronto gets the first star, two goals and an assist. Joe Malone, a goal and two assists. And Corb Denny of Toronto gets a goal and two assists also. So our first loss of the season, that's a bit of a shame. But, you know, it's, it's all right. We're getting there. We're getting there. So big night for some of these players. We have a game against the Toronto Arenas coming up. It's currently December 29th. I think we should go up to the trade deadline and see where this team is at. We're currently th second place in the standings. Toronto are undefeated so far this season. So let's go up to the trade deadline and see where our teams are at. So unread messages. Yeah, that's fine. 
Okay, yeah, we're going to get lots of unread messages by the looks of it. So if I just go into manager options and personal message, just take that off if it's a personal message, we'll go to the trade deadline. So we're going all the way up to the trade deadline. Uh, Berlin Kett is injured. That's fine. Well, it's not, but that's my assistant's job. So we're up to the 31st. Okay, so what's going on here? Um, the player poll results released. So the annual newspaper poll of National Hockey League players was published today with some surprising results. Here are the winners in each category. So they have voted for players of different categories, which is quite nice. The best skater is Nuzi Lalonde, who has 35 points in 12 games, I might add. The hardest shot goes to Harry Cameron of the Toronto Arenas. The smartest player, Nuzi Lalonde of the Montreal Canadiens. The toughest, Eddie Carpenter of the Montreal Canadiens. Fastest, Nuzi Lalonde again. Best role model, Joe Malone, who has 45 points in 16 games so far. The cleanest player, Joe Tretto of the Montreal Canadiens. The toughest goalie to beat, Vezina, who has a uh, has 10 wins in 15 games so far this season. And the coach you'd most like to play for, Cole Mather of the Toronto Arenas. So, we have played 16 games of the season so far, an 11-5-0 record so far on the season. The Toronto Arenas, though, they have a couple of points ahead of us. They have 26 points to take first place in the league standings. Montreal second with 22, Ottawa with 12 points in third, and the Montreal Wanderers, who of course left the NHL in the real NHL. They left just before 1918 began, I believe, and they are down on four points. So they're not doing very well. So, let's take a look at our team and see... Let's just take a look at the NHL stats, shall we? Uh, stats, here we go. So, Joe Malone is leading the league in goals with 25. Petra is leading the league in assists with 24, with Lalonde being second, which is pretty cool. Points, 45 for Joe Malone. So, he's very much keeping towards that, accurate, um, that ac accuracy in the real NHL. Malone has the most shots. Uh, Crichton of Toronto has the best plus minus. Denny has the best face-off percentage. Shots blocked, Cameron with 50. Penalty minutes, Carpenter with 32. Denny power play goals and shorthanded goals, Meeking. And if we go to goalies, Vesna has the most wins with 10. Lindsay has the most losses. And overtime or shootout losses, zero, uh, 3 with Benedict. So Vesna has a record so far of 10-5-0. and oh. He went 12-9-0 and oh in the actual NHL. So let's see if this... Uh, Let's see if this is any similar. Goals against average. Vesna with 3.79 for second place. It's lower than what he actually got overall in the NHL. He's got a few games to make up for it. Vesna second in saves. Second in save percentage. Uh, tied first in shutouts. Uh, tied first in games played. And minutes played. It's slightly under. Okay, so some, lots of different stuff. The, um, the trade deadlines here. Of course, we're not going to trade any players because it's the NHL. So let's go up to the NHL playoffs. It's about a month away. Let's see what happens. So, we are going 15, 9, and 0. Oh. Okay, so by the end of the NHL season, it looks like the Montreal Canadiens have second place in the league. So, it looks like we'll make the playoffs against the Toronto Arenas. We'll hopefully simulate game by game for that. 10 points above the Ottawa Senators and the Montreal Wanderers down with 8 points in 24 games. So, unfortunately, we weren't the regular season champions this year. That went to the Toronto Arenas, so they had a fantastic job there. They've rewritten history slightly with winning the uh, regular season championship. Let's take a look at the stats in the league then and see how this matches up. So, in points, Joe Malone, just like in the real NHL, he led the league in points at the end of the regular season. However, he had 60 points in, I believe, tw 24 games. Yeah, 24 games. 60 points in 24 games, 33 goals, and how many assists? Uh, 27 assists. He had 44 goals and 4 assists in real life. 33 goals, 27 assists for 60 points. Um, and that that's pretty good. I think that's pretty impressive. I'm not going to lie. Then goalie leaders, George Vesna. He had a, he had a slightly improved record in this game than what he did in real life. Uh, he had a 12-9-0 record once again. However, he had a 14-9-0 record here. So the extra two games that have been played compared to what he actually played in real life. He had one shutout, so he tied the amount of shutouts he had in real life. But his save percentage was 3.62, which is actually better than what he got in real life, which was 3.93. Wow, 2.14 for Herbert. Wow, Toronto got a stud goaltender there. So those are the stats from the regular season. Of course, they've got all the different trophies because the real NHL has all these trophies. Back in the day, most of these players hadn't even played in the league yet. So as well as you can see the Vesna trophy, the nominees for that are going to be... Um, Vesna. Well, yeah, I'm glad that he's up for his own trophy. That's pretty good. So we'll mark all of them as red. So we want to go to the playoffs. 
So I assume we're going to play in the playoffs. We've got a couple of players re-signing, which is nice. We'll read all those messages. So do we have... Do we get to play? Ah, we did lose Berlin Kett. That was quite a big loss to our team by the looks of it. So I assume we're going to play in the playoffs, right? Yes, we are. Okay, so we are up against the Toronto Arenas in the playoffs. So we might not have won the regular season, but the Montreal Canadiens could win the playoffs and go to try and face for the Stanley Cup in the league's first year of existence. So let's see what happens. So the Toronto Arenas against the Montreal Canadiens. I believe this is a best of three or a best of five series. Let's see what happens, folks. Simulating and a 3-1 victory for the Toronto Arenas in game one. Wow, Toronto have got Montreal's number this season. That's crazy. Montreal Canadiens have got a few players. Wow, they've got like, wow, they've got five players out and a couple of day-to-day -day players. Wow, seven injuries to the Canadiens lineup. I'm not surprised that they had such a rough time of it. So, not a very good game there for the Canadiens. Uh, Laviolette is out with a uh, quadriceps strain. Great. It's exactly what we need. So we're signing loads of new players to try and deal with the loss of all the players that we've had. So, game number two of the playoffs for the Toronto Arenas and the Montreal Canadiens. Let's see what happens, folks. So, Sammy Herbert back in for them. He's got a safe percentage of .947. We've got a safe percentage of .923 in the playoffs. Can we get a game back? Let's do it, Montreal. Simulating! And a 4-3 victory for the Montreal Canadiens means they have tied the playoffs. Joe Malone with a goal and two assists. Jack Adams with two assists. Well, you can see where that trophy came from. And Didier Petra with a goal and an assist. The winning goal goes to Amos Arbor, though, of Montreal. Ah, Vesna. 34, 34 shots against, 31 saves. 20 shots, 16 saves for Sammy Herbert. So we didn't have as many shots, but we managed to get the goals. Oh, this playoffs is going to be interesting, ladies and gents. Will the arenas go through and actually win the Stanley Cup? The arenas are Stanley Cup champions. Oh, hello. When did that happen? Hang on a minute. So Toronto's head coach was moved to tears after his team beat the Montreal Canadiens by a score of 4-3. to three. I thought we won that. Didn't we win that? Yeah, we won that game to clinch the 1917 finals. A total team effort. The distraught head coach of Montreal left immediately after the game concluded and did not make himself available to media for interviews. I thought we just won that game though, didn't we? So Malone won the Hart Trophy. That's pretty cool. A um, couple of other trophies out there. The All-Stars. Oh, let's look at this. Wow, the Toronto Arenas. The Montreal Canadiens and the Toronto Arenas really swept these All-Stars. So four of the players on the first team All-Stars went to the Toronto Arenas. Left wing Joe Malone and Didier Petra on the right wing for the Montreal Canadiens made the first team. Then Vesna, Corbo, and Nuzi Lalonde managed to make it for the Montreal Canadiens. Which, which isn't too bad. It's not too bad at all. So as expected, Joe Malone of the Montreal Canadiens was named the first team all-star at left wing. Okay. So it looks like we lost out in the playoffs, even though we won one of the games. I was, ah, it was based on goals, wasn't it? That's it. It was based on goals. It was a two-game two goal differential. Right. Okay. That makes sense why Toronto won. I was trying to figure out why they won that. I was like, hang on a minute. Okay. So let's continue. I think we'll get to see the Stanley Cup at some point. Let's simulate to the Stanley Cup, shall we? So simulate to the Stanley Cup. We're all the way at the Stanley Cup. So the top team from the Western Canadian Hockey League, I believe, gets the chance to go up for it. So if we go NHL, if we go Stanley Cup uh, standings. Stanley Cup standings, schedule. No, it is the standings once it actually starts, though, I believe. So let's keep on moving. Uh, Player of the Month awards. Here we go. So there are some there are some games being played. So Stanley Cup standing. So it's Toronto against the Portland Rosebuds of the Western Canada Hockey League. Wow, this is going to be very interesting. So the Toronto Arenas did make it, and I believe it was the Vancouver Millionaires that made it from the Western Canadian Hockey League to play for the Stanley Cup. So we'll have to see what happens. I'm very interested to see what happens. Jack Adams had a great game. Coaches report on new players. How's it going so far in the standings? So Toronto are one nothing up in the series by the looks of it against the Portland Rosebuds. A couple of games have been played there as well. Let's see. The Rosebuds are Stanley Cup champions. The Portland Rosebuds are on top of the hockey world. They downed the Toronto Arenas to capture the 1917-18 Stanley Cup with a 5-4 victory in the clinching game. Rosebuds players celebrated in the dressing room until the wee hours of the morning. I couldn't be more proud of the guys in the room, said the Rosebuds head coach. There's so much heart and determination from the guys on our roster. They just... Don't quit. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is how the 1917-18 NHL season has ended with this replayed season. So, 
Just to recap, the regular season champions in real life were the Montreal Canadiens in this simulation. It was the Toronto Arenas with 38 points, eight more than the Montreal Canadiens. The top scorer was once again Joe Malone. However, he had more points in this than he did in real life. He played four more games roughly in this simulation than he did in real life, but he had a ton more points and a ton more assists. So Joe Malone, he's managed to keep the history there as being the first top scorer in the National Hockey League history. The top goaltender was George Vesna, I believe, in terms of wins. Uh, he was the top goaltender of the regular season. He may not have won the, quote, Vesna trophy, if that was even a thing. Um, but he did have the best regular season record of any goaltender, I believe. Uh, I can just double check that, actually. It might be good to double check that. So goaltender stats. Yeah, Vesna had a record of 14, 9, and 0 on the season with one shutout and a save percentage of 3.62, which is better than his real life stats. Just. Not a huge difference, but just. And then the Stanley Cup Championship. The Toronto Arenas did make it to the Stanley Cup Championship once again. However, they were beaten by the Portland Rosebuds, a team that didn't make the playoffs or the Stanley Cup Championship in real life, managed to come in and sneak it away from a Canadian franchise. So well done to the Portland Rosebuds for winning that. So it just goes to show you that anything can happen when you replay an NHL season. So yes, that is the end of our replay of the 1917-18 NHL season. What did you think about the results in this? Were they good, bad, or do you think the simulation was a little bit fair, unfair towards certain teams or my team or Toronto or anything like that? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know what you guys think. Also, do you have another season that you would like me to go through in this game? Would you like me to go through the expansion season of 1967 and see how the expansion teams do in this simulation? Or do you want me to go through a season that... That was the last season that your team won the Stanley Cup in. Do let me know in the comments below. Also, if you think this, this series is a good idea of me playing through previous NHL seasons and seeing if this stands up, do let me know in the comments below. I really do want to hear what you think. I really want your feedback on whether this series is good. So please do let me know. But thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye.